Hey guys, it's Vera, and today I wanted to talk about a niche gamer article titled Obsidian isn't shoehorning partisan politics into the outer worlds will not lecture players because I think that this is overall a very good article, but I do want to make a few points about it because there are a lot of people uh, praising Obsidian right now about this statement alone, and I think that this is a good statement and I think what they say is very good overall, but I think that there are a lot of flaws in what they're saying and a lot of flaws in how I see Obsidian. So the article starts off with, while some developers want to inject modern partisan politics into video games, Obsidian Entertainment is avoiding that entirely with their next RPG, The Outer Worlds. Uh, the news comes via Fallout creators Leonard Boyarsky and the longtime partner Tim Kane, who are he heading the new project in an interview with VGC. Boyarsky said that they've been very careful to not lecture players with the themes in-game, noting it's the last thing that we want to do. The game features a sci-fi world where mega corporations have begun colonizing and terraforming alien worlds, thus it's likely to show off the bad side of capitalism. Despite this, they reaffirm that they will not be clobbering you over the head with the negatives of capitalism. So this is a, one of the first statements that I wanted to get into, because the theme of the game by itself is probably more political, you know, um, w with it colonizing and terraforming alien worlds and, you know, you have a lot of capitalism, like uh, we're assuming here, I, I have a feeling that there will still be some form of um, po politics in it. I, I don't think that they are going to do away with it completely. Now, what my worry is, is that they will not do it properly. Yes, they're saying that they're very being very careful not to lecture players with themes in the games, but that does not mean that the themes are not still there. That does not still mean that we will not still have to experience those themes, um, because they could be few and far between, which is good, but they still will most likely be in the game. They go on to say, I like money, I am not against capitalism, and in a lot of ways I'm happy with our society. But of course there are a lot of ways in which it could be improved. He also added that the game development started back in 2016, a pretty crazy year for real world politics. It was, but that doesn't particularly have to do with the game um, being very political heavy or having, you know, having to lecture players and not. Uh, started development in April 2016 and a couple of things happened in world politics between then and now that nobody expected. We weren't expecting that. That shows, that statement to me shows that they did have a plan to add more of a political theme to it and add more m maybe political narratives to the game, which I personally do not like. Um, I, I dislike being fed something in my games. I would much rather have the choice to, to have the freedom to make the choices that I want in a game, whether my choices go one way or another. I like having the option. And that, that statement makes me feel like they wanted to go a very different way with the game, but because of real world politics, they decided to go a different way because the politics maybe were too outrageous in their opinion, maybe they did not want to talk about them in a game setting, but with that statement, I feel like if 2016 never happened, let's say, or things turned out differently, that this game would have been very different because they had a different idea in mind for it. I don't want people to think that this is a really hard politically charged game, it is supposed to be fun, it is supposed to be humorous. Having grown up in America and been through the onslaught of consumer culture, we're very familiar with that and like to poke fun in it. I, I, I understand poking fun at something in a game, but what happens if they go overboard with it? Because they're saying that they're not going to. Everything isn't black and white in terms of writing the characters, however. But like with how the 2001 RPG Arcanum, where we were dealing with racial issues, the story always comes down to the balance of power, how to get power and how they use it. We've been very careful. I've been very careful. In the last statement, before I get into my overall thoughts, is there are people in this game who have philosophies that I do not agree with, and I take pains to make those people very likable, very sensible, and very believable. Then there are people in the game who say things I agree with, who are perhaps not very nice to hang out with. 
So we do not want to set up straw man or anything and say, look how horrible this is. It really isn't looking at all aspects of issues. The last thing we want to do is make a game that people feel is lecturing them. This is the statement that truly worries me because it sounds like they are relying on their characters to force the politics into the game. Maybe the overall general storyline and the way that the game works does not have a lot of political aspects um, put into it, but it really sounds like they're actually forcing the characters to kind of tell the side of the politics, which I, again, do not like. I like how characters have different ways that they work and have different maybe opinions or you know, the characters' backstories. But it sounds like they're pushing the politics into the characters and how the characters work. My feedback with The Outer Worlds is this part. The Outer Worlds is launching across Windows PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on October 25th. Do you see that PC part? It is an Epic Game Store exclusive, and we cannot forget that. And that is why I feel like they are making this statement. I feel like this is a worthless statement because the game still is shoehorning in political messages, but they are trying to get on players' good side because they know they have lost a lot of sales and a lot of steam for this game because it is not on Steam. <laughs> Because it is an Epic Game Store exclusive, a lot of people that were considering maybe purchasing it now will not purchase it. I do not support Epic Game Store exclusives. I want to be able to have the freedom to purchase it on whichever launcher, whichever platform I want on PC, and that is a problem. I feel like they are making these statements because they know now is the time where we get in the most press. If we can push out these good statements about our game, people will still buy our game, maybe on a different platform. I, I understand that, yes, this is a great statement um, in a lot of ways, but do I really believe it? Because they put their fans second and put the Epic Game Store exclusivity first. I'm okay with the game being on both platforms, but going straight to an Epic, Epic Game Store exclusive and announcing that straight off the bat and not really getting a getting a consumer's feedback on that to me feels like this is just a bland statement to try to make fans happy with you and possibly and potentially have more sales for your game. But that is the end of the video, you guys. I really just wanted to make the point that this is an Epic Game Store exclusive, and this is something that we should consider when they are making these statements, because to me, these statements feel a lot more lackluster. They feel a lot more lackluster than maybe they would have if this game did not already have so much negative press around it. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, and of course, if you did not, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way. Make sure to check out the links in the description to the article to my Patreon, and also feel free to follow me on Twitter. I post every single day there, but I do hope that you enjoyed, and I will talk to you guys again in the next video really soon.